Well, good morning, everybody. Look who's feeling better. You feeling better? Now she's seen herself. She's like, oh, oh look at me. Um, so she woke up full of beans, right as rain, loads of energy. I, of course, did not. Um, I'm still feeling a little under the weather. Um, but honestly, having this little kid like kind of happy again, she, we've just given her a yogurt because she's so hungry because she's not been able to eat a great deal in the last few days. So we've given her a yogurt to tide her over. Sarah is currently putting her breakfast together and we're hanging out on the sofa and we are watching a film. What are you doing? She's after either my phone or the TV remote. What, what do you want? Oh, TV remote. <laughs> she knows what it does. Doesn't really know how to work it yet. Margot, we're pausing it, baby. Because daddy's speaking. Nope, we're playing. We're watching The Amazing Maurice on Sky. So, as you know by now, or you should know by now, because I've been doing it for an entire year. In fact, this is my final one. Every month um, this year, I have been part of the Sky Cinema Club, which is basically um, where I talk about one of the amazing new films I've got out. This one is Amazing Maurice. It came out today. Um, I remember being at, there's an event at the beginning of the year called Sky Next Up, um, where they talk about all the things that are coming up throughout the year and this was one of the films in the event actually Joe Sugg was there on stage as a speaker because he's in this film which is really exciting I've googled the character he plays I've yet to hear him because I'm literally about uh, 11 minutes into the film I don't think he's appeared yet but I'm doing that with animations trying to guess who, who all the voices are. yeah 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 so far though it is brilliant again we're only 11 minutes in the, 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 the voice acting is incredible we've got Hugh Laurie in it you've got um, uh, I forgot her name uh, uh, Amelia, Clark. Amelia Clark, thank you. Um, and it's sort of like it breaks the fourth wall. It's basically about a very smart cat who can speak and a bunch of rats who can speak who go around um, ripping off towns by like infesting the town with rats and then the cat comes along and like saves the day. Um, it's really good fun at the moment so far. The thing about watching a film with a kid is that you never actually just get to watch the film. Like there's always like a million other things going on or they stop and they start while they go do something else. So um, she's now having breakfast, so we paused it. I'm about to go to the gym. So I'll come back from the gym. I'll sit with her for a bit more. I think by the end of the day, <laughs> we might have finished the whole film. I've still yet to see all of Frozen 2 because um, I start it with her and then I come back and Sarah's watching a different part with her, so I've got no idea what happens in the middle <laughs> of Frozen 2. Um, I'm excited for this one though. So far it's really good, like cheeky fun. I'm gonna put a link in the description box um, to the Sky Cinema YouTube channel so you can watch the trailer and find out any more information you'd like to find out. Um, also, a massive thank you to Sky for having me for the year because I've watched like 12 films that I otherwise might not have done. Um, there's been some really, really good ones too. Also, while we're talking Sky, for all Sky customers, whether you have Sky Cinema or not, Sky have a festive gift. Basically, loads of um, iconic festive films. So we're talking Elf, we're talking uh, Polar Express, things like that, all available on Sky Showcase for everybody! Margot, we found Joe on the TV. My friend, the rat. <laughs> You've not met Joe before, have you? Wait. This one, sardines. Can you tell us, Joe? He's making noises. That's Joe! Got these dancing feet! Okay, I'm in the gym. Dave, over here, my personal trainer. By the way, right, I, I can go to the gym. I know what to do in the gym. I just don't do it. <laughs> so for me, it's a class or having a personal trainer with me because what I tend to do is going to the gym sometimes makes me more anxious because I'm counting everything and thinking about what comes next and I'm watching the clock thinking I've got to get home to be ready for Margot or we'll get some work done or something so having Dave be in charge of my session means all I have to do is get sweaty and lift what he tells me to lift and because of that it's like my most important hour of the day so good for my physical health but also for like my my headspace as well, my mental health, it's brilliant. So Dave, Dave's actually like really cheap therapy and it happens to come with abs as well. <laughs> uh, also, strongest man in the world. I'll be lifting like my heavy weight for squats or something. I'll put it down, exhausted. He'll just literally pick it up and rack it for me. And it's sometimes really like demoralizing, but we do boxing together. Used to fight a lot. What did you do? Do jitsu, boxing, kickboxing, football back, everything. Like, brilliant personal trainer. We focus a lot on my posture, um, a lot on like the function of my body. <laughs> Today we're doing some crunch squats, some press, 
log press. Some log press with this big guy. Can you see that? Where am I looking? It's here. Where am I pointing? Where am I pointing? There it is, that guy. <laughs> that big loggy guy here. Um, and then um, some boxing. Okay, we've got the big guy here. This is how much, Christine? Okay. Now the reason we do a lot, a lot of like shoulder mobility and stuff is because this, you can't mess around with it, it's heavy and it takes a lot of like uh, moving of the rest of your body to get it up in the air. And if you're out of alignment, that's a problem. Right. Scooching. Okay, two more fruit. That's good, easy down. I quite like when it's part of a, the circuit that we're doing moving on to the glue machine here which is so hard that you literally don't put any weight on <laughs> it gets really hard it's a three three exercise circuit what do you call those things hip thrust things yeah landmine rotation landmine rotation to the weird squat machine that everyone hates and then straight into some pulls so today, because I'm not feeling 100% still, we haven't gone like super heavy. I mean, we did the shoulder press thing, that was about 50. I actually could have done more. Otherwise, the, light, the weight was fairly light because I'm not feeling brilliant. But also, some days we do like heavy compound lifts, like squatting as heavy as I can, deadlift as heavy as I can, just to kind of keep that strength in there. Sometimes we have sessions where it's much more like about moving, mobility, like just kind of, um, shifting weight faster and more about like um explosion which is for today and now we're doing some boxing Tell you what, I can feel that bug still kicking around. Oh, like a cold sweat. I'm feeling slightly frustrated after that workout because obviously I'm still not 100% well and maybe I shouldn't have gone in at all, but I cancelled my last two sessions because I was really under the weather. And I said to Dave, listen, I'm not feeling great. Let's not go like crazy. So didn't lift very heavy, which is fine because I wasn't really expecting to, but because it was a boxing session and I really look forward to them. They're my favorite sessions of the week. I only really do one boxing session a week. I was hoping that because I wasn't lifting, God, even now I can feel it because I wasn't lifting and it was more just about like moving. I was hoping it'd be really good. It's frustrating that Dave, even after the first round said to me, oh, I can tell you're not very well because you might even be able to see in the footage. I wasn't very sharp. I wasn't very good <laughs> and it frustrates me because I, I really like the boxing and I like, to, I like to be good at it. And I knew after that first jab, I was like, oh, that's not, <laughs> that's not my usual standard. And then the fatigue kicked in and my lungs weren't getting in enough air. I just sort of started getting like a bit of a cold sweat on and uh, nothing had neither power nor accuracy nor speed. And my footwork was all over the place and I just found it a bit frustrating. Hey ho, I mean, things can only get better. Hopefully, I've sweated out like the rest of the virus now. <laughs> I mean, I'm no longer c contagious or anything, which is why I went in. But hopefully I've just sweated out the rest of like the remnants of whatever was in me. And then when I go back in in a few days time, full of beans, lift heavy, punch hard. 
I've just come downstairs, I've been in the office um, working away, beavering, and I've come downstairs because I could smell some good things. Sarah has made homemade soup and is now making cookies. Yeah, so milk chocolate and cinnamon rolled tortillas. Yeah. And I thought they would look really, I thought they would be really good in like a Christmassy style cookie. Okay. A bit um, of like cinnamony, salty. So what do you do? Where's your, where's your batter? Here, these are like, they're so big old boys. what do you do? Just them up into it? Yeah, wow, these are my last two. But yeah, they're mammoth ones. So you're making a whole a tray full of cookie? There's a tray in there and then these were my spare ones. Well, that's interesting. I'm intrigued by that. This is the soup. What's in here? Um, some tomato. I just put a load of olive oil, tomatoes, yeah. two or three tomatoes, a red pepper, red onion, a load of thyme, um, blitzed it, and then I added some stock, blitzed it a bit more, and then cream just to... So the first four have come out of the oven. They weren't quite how I wanted them to look. I did feel like there was a bit too much butter to flour when I made the mix, but I mean, they look a little bit burnt on camera, but they're actually not. They're quite a nice crisp brown. I'm quite chuffed with that. I'm now finally, you'll see it's now dark. It has been a hectic last few hours, but I'm finally having some of my cookie and let me tell you, that was a good addition of those cinnamony, crispy things. Oh, Jim, have you had one yet? I may have had a nibble of one. Did you get a cinnamony bit? Um, cinnamony, that honestly, sounds very... I can't taste a great deal because my throat's so sore. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> they are good. It hurts to eat, but it feels like a good cookie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is a good cookie. We have just finished the amazing Maurice. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I had to come back to it now that Margot's in bed because she got distracted playing with toys. Little ones don't have the longest attention span, but then I was getting so into it that I wanted to finish it. And then I was like, oh, we're gonna have to come back to this later. So Margot and I continued playing. And then when she went to bed, I have just finished it and I loved it. Just felt like, I think I said this the other day in a vlog, like around this time of year, everything should just feel warm and fuzzy and cozy. And that was, that was the vibes that it was giving. So I, I was gonna make some dinner and it's actually been quite a long day. Everyone is still a bit poorly. So we just ordered from Pho. Maybe I'll show you that when it comes. I love Pho. Is that how you say it? Pho? Is that how you say pho. it, Jim? Pho. No, pho. I think it's Pho. No, it's Pho. Really? Um, I am, well, I'm basing this on an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, so I might be wrong. <laughs> have we done the giveaway today, Jim? No. Oh. I have to go and edit yesterday's video, so um, sayonara. So just before I start my dinner, which, you know, I should have cooked because it really would have led in well with today's giveaway, but I didn't want to cook tonight. Anyway, when I do want to cook, I have been using this. This is an always pan. I don't know if you have seen them on Instagram. They are like, they are just everywhere on social media. And I'll tell you why it is because they are brilliant. So this is the always pan and today's giveaway is an always pan and an always pot. So we will link that below in the video so you can see we what they the look pot. like. We do not have the pot, we but it's on my on list. About, like, genuinely, Sarah has been going on about this pan for about three months. And obviously we've not been in the house for three months. So we only moved into the house about a month ago. And it was on our list of things to buy because she saw it advertised on someone's Instagram, was it? Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, I need it. It just like the way it conducts heat. You can use it as a skillet. It's great for cooking like a steak or for frying bacon. It's non-stick. I could wax lyrical about a pan. I'm getting old. Anyway, they're brilliant, brilliant pans. And we have got a pan and a pot to give away. And that's like, I think that's like 300 pounds worth of pan. Today's giveaway is gonna be hosted over on my Instagram. So you know what to do by now. Head over onto my Instagram and enter by commenting on the reel. Uh, T's and C's will be also below and I think we'll also link below to the pan so you can check them out. What day of the 12 days of Vlogmas is it? We've got to be getting towards the end now, haven't we? I think so. So we're filming a day ahead, but we've kind of lost track of what day it is. When you're ill, you just kind of have no idea which way it's up. It's also really confusing because you film a day, you edit the day, you upload it for the next day and you're filming the current day. Yeah. Um, we're Sarah and I like, who's... What day is it What today? day is... And yeah. who's... Real is going on Instagram, yeah. and like, it's confusing. Um, we hope you're enjoying Vlogmas so far. I'm actually really enjoying making it, despite yeah. being a bit under the weather, a bit poorly and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's really good fun and it gets you festive. 